Hello and welcome to this pre-recorded event for GCSE Music, the current specification. Controlled Assessment Marking Training for Performance Unit 1. To help you get the most out of this session, you may want to have the following documents handy as we will refer to them during the session. The specification containing all the relevant mark schemes. You will be guided to the correct pages at the appropriate points in the presentation. The audio files, which are the recordings of the candidate's performances. This is available as a zip file and will take some time to download, so you should pause the video at the end of this slide to download and unzip the files. The scores, which are the stimuli for the candidate's performances. Now pause the video and download the materials and unzip the audio files. The specification is divided into three units, performing, composing and listening and appraising. The first two units are internally assessed and externally moderated. The third unit is examined in a written paper which is sat sometime in May or June and is externally marked. Performing and composing are each worth 30% of the overall marks, and the written paper is worth 40% of the marks for the award. All work for performing and composing must be marked by the teacher examiner and sent to the moderator to arrive by the 15th of May in the exam year. The deadline is always the 15th of May, so if this falls on a weekend, the work is expected to be with the moderator on the Friday before this. Candidates are expected to present two items to be assessed for Unit 1, a solo performance and an ensemble performance. These are equally weighted and are thus each worth 15% of the overall award. It should be emphasised to students that their ensemble performance is worth just as many marks as their solo and so should receive equal care and attention. There are four options for the solo performance. Candidates can record a traditional solo, an improvised solo, a sequenced performance or a realisation. The realisation option itself has various options that we will look at in a later slide. The traditional solo is one in which the student prepares a piece in which they are playing the leading role. For example, a piano sonata or an accompanied song in which they are the soloist. It is important that candidates are able to present a stimulus for the performance against which the accuracy of their performance is judged. This can be a score or a professional recording of the piece. A solo improvisation is similar to a traditional performance, but contains a significant proportion of improvisation. An eight-bar guitar solo would not count as a solo improvisation, but improvising for three minutes on a 12-bar blues or jazz sequence would count. A submission is considered to be a sequenced performance when a candidate inputs on a sequencer or door, a piece composed by someone other than themselves. DAW is an acronym for Digital Audio Workstation and includes software such as Logic, Cubebase and Sonar. Some people use Sibelius as a sequencing package, but it should be understood that Sibelius is principally notation software and will not have the same controlling and editing options as a DAW. Loop-based software such as GarageBand does have some sequencing functionality, but teachers are advised only to let students use these programs if they themselves are familiar with the loops contained in the software and can vouch for the student having input all the work themselves. The use of pre-recorded loops is not permitted for this option, as all the note input must be the candidate's own work. Realisation is considered on the following slide. Realisation was a new option for the current specification and was envisaged as an option for students whose performances are not appropriate to be assessed for accuracy against a stimulus. For example, 
a student who has learned a piece through the oral tradition would not have a score or professional recording to refer to, but their performance would be every bit as valid as someone performing a Beethoven sonata. Sequenced composition. These are realizations as the score will match the audio, giving 100% accuracy. Therefore, it needs to be marked in a different way. Performance of composition. These are realizations for similar reasons. Oral tradition. Music that has been passed down in this way is probably not available as notation, so can be submitted as a realization. DJ performances. The accuracy is not down to the DJ. It is up to the original recording artists. Technical demands include the difficulty of beat matching, crossfading, use of appropriate material, and keeping performance to a suitable length for GCSE. Electroacoustic music. This involves the teacher examiner being present to describe how the sounds have been manipulated and treated. The final two options on the slide should be approached with caution and only if the teacher feels that they are able to assess the work with a suitable level of expertise. All realizations will need a written commentary outlining the performance. These are not marked so the teacher examiner can give assistance if they wish. Commentaries should outline the technical demands, what the candidates were trying to achieve, anything to note in particular about their performance. And the teacher examiner should give clear comments in appropriate detail as to why they award a particular mark for realization. Now it is time to listen to the first solo performance. If you have not already done so, pause the video and download the audio files and score PDFs. On the instruction to pause the video, listen to the 01 solo voice Miss You MP3 and compare it to the score on page 1 to 6 of the score's PDF. Refer to page 29 of the specification to decide on what level of difficulty the piece is. Then refer to page 16 for the solo performing mark grid. When you have decided on a raw mark, refer to page 15 of the specification to scale it according to what level of difficulty you have decided on. Note that all the page references to the specification are two pages less than the PDF page numbering. Now pause the video and listen to the audio. Write some notes to remind you of your assessment. Hopefully you have spent some time assessing the work yourself. LOD on the slide refers to level of difficulty. The page references on the spec are given for you to refer to. This is what we thought. The song starts promisingly, but there are lots of inaccuracies when compared to the stimulus which has been given, the score. It would have been perfectly acceptable to annotate the changes to the score that go beyond simple interpretation, thus removing this issue. For this style of performance, it is often better to submit the professional recording of the track as the stimulus, since this is generally what the candidate is copying rather than the score. Even if that was the case, in this instance, there would still have been many discrepancies from the original. Tuning and diction suffer throughout the performance, and the second verse has a big hesitation as the candidate tries to find the words. She also tries to sing all of the overlaid parts towards the end of the song, which detracts considerably from the interpretation. This performance could have been a lot stronger with a few minor tweaks and some good advice. As it stands, however, it scored 7 for accuracy, 7 for interpretation, and a raw score of 14 marks. The level of difficulty was judged to be standard, not quite meeting enough of the more difficult criteria to be scaled up, so the final mark was 14. The second solo performance is another vocal performance for comparison. On the instruction to pause the video, 
Listen to 02 Solo Voice, Oh Is There Not One Maiden Breast, MP3, and compare it to the score on pages 10 to 14 of the score's PDF. Refer to P29 of the specification to decide on what level of difficulty the piece is. Then refer to P16 for the solo performing mark grid. When you've decided on a raw mark, refer to P15 of the specification to scale it according to what level of difficulty you have decided on. Now pause the video and listen to the audio. Write some notes to remind you of your assessment. This is what we thought of the second performance. Note the annotation of the score. This is helpful and recommended where appropriate. Again, there are a few tuning issues in this performance, but not so consistently through the piece. Diction is good throughout, and a lot of effort has gone into interpreting in a suitable style. There were a few minor slips, but not enough to take away, so it was given ten marks for accuracy. The performance was convincing and stylish in general, and just squeezed into the excellent criterion for interpretation, scoring 15 marks. As the piece was judged to be more difficult, the raw mark of 25 was scaled up to 29. The third performance is an example of a sequenced solo. The candidate has input the music for intermezzo on a door and edited it to make the parts resemble the live instruments as closely as possible. On the instruction to pause the video, listen to 03 sequence intermezzo mp3 and compare it to the score on P16 to 17 of the score's PDF. Refer to P42 of the specification to decide on what level of difficulty the piece is. Then refer to P18 for the solo sequencing mark grid. When you've decided on a raw mark, refer to P15 of the specification to scale it according to what level of difficulty you've decided on. Now pause the video and listen to the audio. Write some notes to remind you of your assessment. This is what we thought of the sequenced performance. This is an excellent choice of piece. The chosen voices sound convincing, and there is a lot of opportunity to demonstrate editing skill with the articulation and dynamic shaping. This was felt to be as good as a sequenced performance as could be expected from a GCSE candidate, and it achieved full marks. It was also felt to be more difficult but had already scored full marks before scaling. Now we will move on to performances where the candidate is assessed not only on their accuracy and interpretation, but also how they have fitted into the group as a whole, ensemble performances. It is very important that candidates make a sound choice of performance piece for both their performances, but particularly so for the ensemble, where they have to ensure that it meets the specification requirements. An ensemble performance must consist of two or more people performing undoubled, simultaneously sounding, independent parts, with or without additional backing or accompaniment as appropriate. Undoubled means that the candidate is not performing the same line as someone else in the ensemble. This includes singers being doubled by the top voice in a piano accompaniment part. Simultaneously sounding independent parts means that the individual parts need to be happening at the same time for a significant proportion of the piece. It is insufficient to have a few bars of music where the parts interweave. Some care needs to be taken in the selection process to ensure that this criterion is met. A pre-recorded backing is acceptable for ensemble performances, but this does not count as one of the parts. As long as the previously listed requirements are met, the following are examples of ensemble performances. A flute duet. Either part of the duet is acceptable.
a vocal duet with or without backing or accompaniment, the guitar or bass part in a band, a lead role if it is accompanied by at least two other live performers, for example, a singer in a live band, the accompanist for a solo performer, for example, a piano player accompanying a cello solo. The following are examples that are not acceptable as ensembles. An accompanied solo with a part to be assessed is the solo part. For example, the violin player in a violin sonata. An individual part in a section that is being doubled by other performers. For example, a tenor singer in a tenor section of a choir. A duet in which both parts are singing the same thing for a significant proportion of the piece. All of these points apply to the options listed on the slide as traditional ensemble and ensemble improvisation. The traditional ensemble probably requires no further elaboration, but the ensemble improvisation does. Ensemble improvisation is like an amalgam of solo improvisation and traditional ensemble. In other words, the candidate to be assessed is expected to improvise a significant proportion of the piece. But will be playing as part of an ensemble. An example would be a saxophone player in a jazz quartet. Rehearsing and directing requires a DVD showing the candidate rehearsing the ensemble before the final performance. They should not be performing on the DVD themselves. The next slide will cover the multi-track recording option. The mark schemes on P26 to 28 of the specification clarify exactly what the moderators are looking for in a multi-track recording. Essentially, any of the three options will be marked on the candidate's ability to capture the recording without any extraneous noise, apply appropriate effects, and balance the parts well. The first part of the mark scheme that would normally be the marks assigned to accuracy will depend on which route the candidate chooses. It is important that if candidates take this option, they are in sole control of where microphones are positioned, which effects are used, how they manage the recording process, and how they mix the final result. They do not actually have to play on the recording themselves. In fact, it is generally better if they do not perform on their own recording, so that they can pay full attention to the recording process rather than the technicalities of playing their instrument. Note that sequencing is the solo option for music technology. For the ensemble option, candidates must record and mix at least one track of audio in addition to the sequenced parts. The fourth performance is an example of traditional ensemble performance. On the instruction to pause the video, listen to 04 ends clarinet. Solicitude MP3, and compare it to the score on P15 of the score's PDF. Refer to P38 of the specification to decide on what level of difficulty the piece is. Then refer to P20 to 21 for the traditional ensemble performance mark grids. When you have decided on a raw mark, refer to P15 of the specification to scale it according to what level of difficulty you've decided on. Now pause the video and listen to the audio. Write some notes to remind yourself of your assessment. This is what we thought of the performance. The clarinet was a touch out of tune throughout, but evenly so, as if the instrument had not been tuned properly for the recording. There were a few minor slips, such as bar 22, so 9 out of 12 was awarded as a best fit mark for accuracy, as errors certainly didn't interrupt the flow. In ensemble performances, the candidate's reaction to the other parts plays a major role. This candidate reacted very well to the other performers and had an excellent sense of balance with the other parts. So, even though the interpretation overall was towards the bottom of the good criterion, the ensemble skill 
raised the mark to 13 out of 18. The piece missed out on the more difficult level of difficulty, so the final mark was 22. The fifth performance is another example of traditional ensemble performance. On the instruction to pause the video, listen to 05 N's guitar Wake Me Up MP3 and compare it to the score on P15 of the score's PDF. Refer to P38 of the specification to decide on what level of difficulty the piece is. Then refer to P20 to 21 for the traditional ensemble performance mark grids. When you have decided on a raw mark, refer to P15 of the specification to scale it according to what level of difficulty you've decided on. Now pause the video and listen to the audio. Write some notes to remind you of your assessment. This is what we thought of the performance. Note the errors in the score for this piece which was obviously generated for the benefit of the moderator. However, a professional recording was also submitted, so the moderator used the stimulus that most benefited the candidate. This is an accurate rendition of the song with excellent ensemble skill and interpretation towards the bottom of the good criterion. So it was awarded 11 for accuracy and 14 for interpretation and ensemble skill. The level of difficulty was felt to be standard, so the final mark was 25. The teacher examiner comments are an extremely important part of the moderation process. It is much more likely that a teacher mark will be accepted if it is justified appropriately with language that matches the descriptor in the mark scheme. Also, if there is something about the performance that is not immediately obvious from the recording, this should be pointed out in your comments. For example, if the candidate was giving visual cues to the other performers in the ensemble, then they were taking a clear leading role. But this will not be clear from just listening to the music. You should also justify your choice of level of difficulty using the language from the grids. ABRSM grades or grade exams from other boards do not necessarily match up with the levels of difficulty grids, so should not be used to the exclusion of valid comments.